Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm doing my June wrap up video. I really like watching these videos and I like filming these videos as well. So I'm usually really excited to sit down with you guys and then just sort of wrap up the month. Um, I want to talk about the energy, some of the products that I've been using as well, as I do consider my makeup to be a sacred aspect of my spiritual practice. But before we get started and all that stuff and I break down the decks that I felt most drawn to working with this month, I want to discuss the energy. So I do have some cards here that I set aside. They're part of the Witch Sister Tarot. And there is nudity, but I, f I work a lot with that deck. The Witch Sister Tarot is what I consider to be my soul deck. So I do work a lot with that deck. And I this month was no different. I, I worked a lot with this deck and these were a lot of the cards that I was pulling nonstop, just repeatedly. And this month, I really got a very, uh, I don't know, I got a better understanding of the moon card. So if you're new to tarot, the moon card is considered the zodiac trump card of the sign Pisces, which is my sign. So for me, I've always gravitated more towards your like your numerology or life path number so I'm a four so I always gravitated towards the death and the emperor cards and really I'd say this month I finally understand why the moon card is the zodiac trump card of, of Pisces right it's part of our story if you will so this is the moon child card from the witch sister tarot and a huge aspect of this card, of course you look at the traditional meaning of it being associated with illusions or delusions, deceit, um, the like mysteriousness or mystery. It's a very elusive energy. It's associated with the subconscious as well. Typically when I pull the moon card, I, I know that there might be a full moon um, or it's going to be energetically a day where a lot of people are ruled by their subconscious. So a lot of their behaviors are driven by their subconscious, uh, possibly subconscious fears. So, however, this month I got a real sense of this card really coming in and meaning what you see and what you experience in a spiritual way, your intuitive gifts, they're not, there's a sense of, is this real or is this all in my head? And then a shift happens when you do finally understand that it's not all in your head. What you see and what you believe, what you feel, what you experience, it is reality. It's the truth. And then it sort of shifts into the high priestess and a little bit of the chariot as well here. The high priestess being really accepting these gifts as well as the chariot. Um, but the high priestess is, is really about owning it, listening to these gifts, listening to the intuition. Whereas I feel like the chariot card is more about the acceptance of these gifts, the acceptance also of the responsibility of playing this role and when we talk about the roles or I guess if we're going to get more specific about the role in a most in a more recent video I talked about how I was pulling the bridge card a lot um, what I didn't share is when I first started connecting with Hecate, one of the very first things that she mentioned to me was how I am meant to be a bridge. So I found that this month, actually I could say the past couple of months, this card has been really, I've been pulling it a lot lately and it's been really creating a foundation as this role of the bridge. 
accepting this role as well as helping people through their transitions and their transformations as well that I play a role in that and I can play a role in that and I do think that that is one of the purposes why I'm here. Some other energies that I was dealing a lot with particularly this month is I kept pulling this card. This is the Witch of Trees in traditional tarot. This is the Knight of Wands card. However, I read this card differently. I feel that there's a tr there's a connection to the the magician card in this card particularly, at least in this deck. Because of the way she's clutching to the dagger. It's ready. Um she can uh she can use it at, at a moment's notice, especially with the fox energy here. It's really about the use of your tools. And there is no greater teacher of the use of your tools than the magician card. He's always got his tools. If you know anybody ruled by this card, um, this card is actually my husband's signifier card because he's got a lot of really strong mercury placements, although he's a Leo. Um, he does have a lot, particularly I think Virgo. He has a really strong Virgo placement. He's ruled by mercury. And this card is one of his signifiers. Um, so if you know anybody who you pull this card to signify them or they have really strong mercury placements, their greatest tool, well, they're all about the use of their tools and their greatest tool is their, their words, their thoughts. But these two together, particularly, there's really strong messages of what are your tools and really getting to know your tools, getting to know your strengths as well. So I feel like this month particularly, I made some really great progress with my tools <laughs> and I feel finally a really great sense of comfort and that I, I have a true foundation in, in my practice. I finally have, I, f I found a place where I feel really, I don't know, full bodied or, or fleshed out when it comes to my spiritual practice and my spiritual gifts as well. I've come to a place where I'm extremely comfortable with my practice as well. Um, and I haven't really been able to say that for some time. I felt like everybody. I, I had these cycles where I would feel very bored with my practice and then I, I would have that passion reignited by something. So finally, I do feel the sense of comfort, but also the sense of knowing and understanding um, and really being comfortable with with my my spiritual into uh, what is it like my spiritual intuitive gifts um, as well as my magic I, I found I, f I finally found a, a place in in my practice where I do feel that I just feel really comfortable in my glamour magic and my color magic uh, practice. And I've moved on now to, like I'm, I'm expanding my glamour magic practice and we'll talk a little bit about that later in the video because I do have a deck that I want to show you. But I'm comfortable to, f like I'm just finally comfortable. I found a spot sort of in the middle uh, where I just, I feel, I feel like I, f I finally found my voice. I finally found this sense of comfort. I've come to uh, a spot in my practice where I just feel fulfilled and I feel that this unique practice of mine, it's, it's a part of what I'm meant to do here. So next up. It's as if you're not new here, um, as most of you are well, well aware, I do use candles in my spiritual practice and 
especially in connection to uh, DD or some DD work that I do with my main guides. And I've been on the hunt for a Hades candle. I was using a Bath and Body Works candle. I think it was scented vanilla or spiced vanilla or something like that. It ended up getting completely used, which I'm happy about, but I was on the lookout for a new candle and I was actually recently gifted this one. Uh, it's, it smells amazing. It is, notes are lemon leaves, chilled spearmint, and cedar wood citrus. So I do find some of these notes do align with, um, with Hades. He is, I know it's spearmint, but I know he is associated with the plant mint. And cedar wood, I, I wanna say there is, I'm not sure if it's cedar wood, but there is a wood that he is associated with. It's a very masculine scent. It's, it's really nice, plus it has the navy blue lid, which I did want to get him a navy blue handle. So I think it's just interesting how if you do set an intention that you want something for your practice for a specific guide, I do think that it will somehow end up in your practice. Um, you'll just, you'll just find you'll just find it. You'll come across it or somebody will gift you something. So I did want to share that. Um, I did, I think, forget to mention that in my offerings video, but I do find a lot of the times if you're looking for something in your practice for Dee, Dee you will come across it somehow or it will end up in your practice, especially if you set that intention. You know, if you need something for your practice for a specific guide, it will just show up. Um, I do find typically that is the case, at least in my practice, especially with Hades. I will just end up with objects for him. I rarely have to go out and purchase it. It, it will just show up um, for the most part. So now I want to move on to the, or move into the um, the makeup items, which are a huge part of my practice is glamour magic, color magic, working a lot with color spiritually. Um, a lot of the color I use, I do assign personal correspondences. Um, I will also use makeup to connect with guides or archetypes. So it is a huge part of my practice and it, it is one that I'm very comfortable with. I'm very happy with it. It's a very exciting aspect of my practice as well, I do have to say. I have quite a few palettes here that I've been using. I have to say I've been working out of a lot of my different palettes. So I have, I'm gonna save that one for last, but I do have two from Clarity Cosmetics. One is from Hip Dot. I've showed this on my channel before. This is a palette that I like to use with Hades in mind, typically. You can see it has a lot of blues and there's a lot of earth shades as well. I do associate Hades with a lot of these colors, especially the navy blue. I find that anytime I wanted to wear a navy blue this month, which was a lot, <laughs> I was reaching for this palette. I love this navy blue. It's, um, sorry, it's this one right here. It's gorgeous. Um, navy blue to me. It connects you to the water element, but it has a regal energy to it. It's very dignified. Um, and it's very full bodied, very intentional. Um, and I love working with navy blue if I'm going to be dealing with a lot of intense emotions on that day, um, as well as browns, but that's uh, pretty self-explanatory. Brown to me is a very grounding color, so I like to use brown for if I know, you know, shit's gonna hit the fan that day or it's gonna be really emotionally intense, chaotic. I like to wear a lot of browns, navy blues, um, and depending on 
what I want to bring to the table, what qualities I want to bring out that day. Sometimes I'll wear pink, especially if I want to add a touch of playfulness, playful curiosity, um, or affection. So I think it's really interesting and it's fun to play with color. That's why I'm so drawn to working with eyeshadow palettes on my path. And the next palette, you'll see this is a very interesting color story. So this is from Anna, this is Anaconda from Clarity Cosmetics. I've spoken about this palette a few times on my channel, but look at the color story. It's gorgeous. Pythong here is a gorgeous blush shade, by the way, so I don't believe that you just have to use eyeshadow palettes as eyeshadow. I, I use them on my cheeks as well. I have probably used most shades out of this palette. I'm wearing this light, it's like a blue-green, but it leans more green, honestly, on my lid. I'm wearing that today. And I've worn, like, this blue is gorgeous. Um, this purple is gorgeous. There's, there is a pink erectile dis e-reptile, sorry, e-reptile dysfunction here is the most gorgeous. It's one of those shifty duochrome shades that Clarity Cosmetics, they just have the most beautiful chef's kiss duochrome and multi-chrome shades. Um, it's one of their, uh, I think it's a duochrome. It shifts, I think gold, pink to gold. It's gorgeous. Um, but yeah, I, I wore this palette a lot. Um, you probably saw many looks on my channel this month using this palette. And it has serpent energy. I felt this recent pull to work with the Siren archetype. And I, I, do, I do think that there are mermaid siren beings that are part serpent. Um, especially if you look online at the art, and, and that's what I do like to do. I like to incorporate a lot of art into my spiritual practice as well. I, I work a lot with imagery. That's why I'm so drawn to tarot and oracle, which we're going to get into in a bit. Um, I, do, I do like to work a lot with uh, different animal energy as well. Um, and I do find makeup or eyeshadow palettes are some of the greatest ways to do that. And Clarity Cosmetics has some really interesting um, palettes. They have a Croc one, which I've purchased recently. It's on its way to me. They have a Komodo one, which is sold out. I'm planning on purchasing that as soon as it's back. Hopefully it comes back. Um, but anyway, I'm... I'm rambling, so let's move on to the next palette. So I have Witchcraft here. Recently mentioned this on my channel as well. Absolutely in love with this palette. I am working with today, I have, I think, Magic and Potion on my lid today. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, a lot of these shades, they shift uh, two, typically it's two colors, um, like I think magic, it's, it's a green blue and then potion is like a pink per, or it's a purple, purple blue. I can't quite remember and I'm not in the greatest lighting right now. So that's that, but I've been wearing this a lot. Um, I like sisters. Sisters is one of my favorite shades as well as witch, which I'm wearing today, witch. Um, the green one here is gorgeous. Halloween. It's called Halloween. It shifts brown to green. It's absolutely gorgeous. I wear that a lot as well, even just to work. Maybe not on my channel, but I wear it a lot to work, um, depending on what's going on. And the mattes aren't too bad either. I do work a lot with the mattes. I've worn, I've worn pretty much all of the mattes at this point. <laughs> so absolutely love this palette. The last palette that I'm really excited to talk about is also by Clarity Cosmetics and I believe it's coming back into stock soon. It's called the Apocalypse palette. This palette has the judgment card 
um, energy to it. It's um, like Restless Dead, so I I like to work with uh, Hecate, Hades, particularly Hecate with this palette. It's going to be perfect for the fall. Um, the autumn, it has an, a very interesting color story. I haven't worked with a lot of the mattes in this palette, but I absolutely love... Um, oh, let me show you. Uh, Tomb It May Concern, so it's this... Wait, where is it? This one here. It looks green right now in the camera. This one, I Choose You, also. This is gorgeous. And then I think these two bottom shades. There's like a, a very aqua blue shade. It looks like water to me. Then there's a more icy one, which I think is up here. And then this shade is gorgeous. It's very Lilith vibes. I think it shifts gold to pink. It's... I just put that on the lid and I feel like Lilith that day. <laughs> Tomb It May Concern is a fascinating color. I think it shifts purple to green. This gives me Hocus Pocus vibes. <laughs> it's a very witchy shade to me. And it's stunning. I also love I Choose You. I wear this a lot. I just wore it to work the other day. And I'll show you the Lilith one. Go Big or Gord Home. The shade just... I, I put it on and I just... I feel like Lilith. <laughs> yeah, it shifts pink to gold. Absolutely gorgeous palette. I'm really... I hope it comes back into stock. I, I think that it's... It's gorgeous. I think these palettes are worth the money. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to the lipstick. So, as I've mentioned on my channel before, I love this color. This is the Maybelline Superstay Matte Ink in Romantic. I wear this a lot on my channel. I just wore it in one of my more recent videos. Um, can't get enough of it. Gemini is another shade that I wear a lot, probably not on my channel, but in my personal life to work, I will wear this shade. It's gorgeous. And on the days that I have a really dramatic eye, I typically will wear this shade. It's by ColourPop. It's the Ultra Matte Lip. Um, I have it in the shade Double Date. It is a, like just... It's like the perfect nude shade. And sometimes when I do want to have that pink undertone, I'll just I'll just uh, add this double date shade on top of the Gemini and it gives me this like dusty rose nude. It's gorgeous. Or I'll just wear a double date typically. Uh oh. It's gorgeous. I'm about to run out. I have to buy another one. I'm wearing Peach Bellini today. So this is like that. It's a gorgeous. Uh, nude pink. It's a very light pink, very peachy pink shade. And then another one that I wore a lot, you've seen this in a lot of my videos as well, it's called the Poisoned Apple. This is a lip gloss by Clarity Cosmetics. It smells like caramel. I swear to God, it smells like, like caramel to me. I'll usually wear a red I'll wear a red lip liner underneath and then just this. Um, I've worn this a lot on my channel in my videos. Okay, I'm gonna go clean my hands and then we're gonna get to the fun part of this video. I'm sure you're excited. This is, I think, why most people watch my channel. Um, we're gonna get into the decks, so I'll be right back. So my usual decks, I've spoken so much on my channel about this deck, the Wild Unknown Archetypes deck. Can't get enough of it. I have been pulling from this deck typically once a week to get an energy outlook for the week. Um, can't get enough of this deck. It's a very powerful deck. It's one of my favorite decks currently in my collection, and I think it's one of the most powerful decks in my collection as well. 
as well as Tarot of the Hidden Realms. I've recently been feeling a, a call to work with this deck on a more intimate level. Um, as well as just bringing it in to my practice um, for the use of color. Oh, that's beautiful. I love the rich greens. I just love Julia Jeffries use of color in her decks. Absolutely gorgeous. I feel very inspired when I work with her decks to create some of the most beautiful um, makeup looks that I've created. And I just, I love that about her decks. They just, they blow you away. They take your breath away. Incredibly powerful tools. I'll show you the other one. I absolutely love this deck as well, as most of you are well aware <laughs> at this point. Um, I'll show you some more images. I know I showed it at the beginning of the video, but why not, right? So, as I've mentioned recently in my The Cosmic Pearl unboxing, I've recently felt a shift occur in my in my practice, in my personal practice with um, with color and makeup. And I felt this new archetype step in. It is um, a siren archetype. I'm still not 100% sure who exactly it is, um, but I don't really feel called to finding out more, at least at this point. I have, I have uh, suspicions as to who it is. Um, However, I don't feel like it's really that important at this point in time to really uh, get so, I don't know, like just so fixated on who it is in the myths that I'm working with. But I have felt this new passion to explore my home element, the water element. As I've mentioned before, I've I'm a Virgo moon and um, Mars and Capricorn, so I feel such such a, a pull and a lust for the earth element. A lot of the artwork and the decks that I have are earth themed. Some of my most favorite decks, like the Witch Sister Tarot, it, it's just full of that rich, um, earthy energy that I absolutely love to. I'm incredibly drawn to it. However, I'm a Pisces. So with this new shift in my practice, with this new archetype, I have felt such a call to really explore my home element of the water element. And you can see that in my decks, like, cause we were moving from like the, you know, my, my regular uh, wild unknown archetype to my witch sister and tarot of the hidden realms, which are both, they have a lot of that earth energy, to now the flow tarot. <laughs> so this deck is an incredible deck. I'm so happy that I have it in my collection. It is an indie deck, so it was expensive, but I do think that it is, it's, it's such a unique deck. It only, features the water element um, and all the suits have been renamed to feature I guess an aspect of water that sort of aligns with um, with the, the other three elements. Absolutely beautiful deck. What I like about the deck is it features like it'll have the title of what the card is and then it'll have a little uh, keyword or a couple of keywords to describe the energy. So I could see this working um, for a beginner in that way, or it's probably better suited for an intermediate, but you can kind of get an idea of what card this is because the suits have been renamed, even the water element. Um, I oftentimes forget what suit 
It is, so I have to pull out the guidebook, but what I like about the guidebook is it's easy to find what the suits are. It's like in the very beginning. So wands here is uh, waves, pawns is pentacles, which makes sense. Snow is swords, clouds is cups. Um, so I do, I do kind of, that makes sense, like clouds has that very dreamy, like a very associated with illusion kind of energy. Um, I also think that this deck is aligning really well with the energy of the siren that I've been working with. New to my collection is the, the Cosmic Pearl Oracle. I just did an unboxing on my channel of this deck. Absolutely beautiful deck. I haven't felt called to read from the guidebook yet. Um, I know it's coming. I do like to read my guidebooks, but I've been working with this deck intuitively. There's nudity in this deck, by the way. And I've been really enjoying connecting with it intuitively. It has a very dreamy energy. There is an aspect to the siren archetype that I've been working with. It has... So far, it's energetically revealed itself in two ways. It has this um, very dreamy, ethereal kind of energy. Um, one that's very curious, kind of made an archetype-like, in a sense. Kind of innocent, dreamy. And then it has a darker face as well. One that is more moody. It's, it's dark. but a very interesting experience um, working with this archetype. And I've been really enjoying this deck um, and connecting it with this archetype. I love that, Jing. It's like that periwinkle blue. It's gorgeous. Hey guys, it's the next day. I actually forgot to talk about a new deck in my collection that I've been using since I got it. I'd say about a week ago. Could be going on two weeks now. It's the Secret Language of Color. I believe I did mention this in one of my more recent videos. So I purchased this, as I mentioned earlier in this video. I do have an intention as well as a pull to expand my my color correspondences. Um, so I purchased this with that intention in mind and I've been using it pretty much on a daily basis and I like to use it along with whatever tarot deck I'm using. I will use this as well as with whatever tarot deck I'm using for the day. So for example, I have the flow tarot here. I'll pull my cards for the flow tarot. It's usually between one to three cards. And then I'll pull a color card. Um, I'll either pull one to three colors from the deck. And I like to use this to either confirm a color story that I should be working with that day, like a recommended color story, uh, to either go with whatever my tarot pull is of the day. So for example, today is um, blue and green. So I'm using blue and green today. So I like to work with this to attract energy as well as to repel energy, which is still something I'm experimenting with. Um, it's something that I want to explore more within the next couple of weeks because usually I use color to attract things in my life. So it's interesting to then try and use the energy in an opposite way. So I'm going to be exploring that um, in the next couple of weeks. So that is just a quick rundown of this deck. Um, I'm sorry, I totally forgot to mention it yesterday in my uh, in my video. So another thing that I've been forgetting to mention, I am so bad at this YouTuber stuff. On my Instagram, I am now 
offering general readings. Uh, it's just weekly outlook readings. So if that interests you, um, if you're interested in me as a reader, uh, head over to my Instagram. I always put my social handles in the description box below. So feel free to check out my description box. Um, there's a lot of information in there. I also like to break down, um, a lot, like I provide a breakdown of the decks as well like uh, the decks that I mention in my videos. So if you're interested in any of the decks and you want to know the title, I have a list of it in the description box always. And I think that wraps up this month. I know I haven't been working with a lot of decks. I've just been really enjoying working with what I have, um, especially the Flow Tarot here. And I think it's really interesting working with my home element the way I've been working with it. It's, um, it's very refreshing. Uh, I've been working a lot with, as I've said, earth as well as fire, um, really working with the element of fire the past year, I'd say, really getting to know the fire element in so many different ways and aspects and bringing it into my practice. So it's interesting now that there is a shift and a call now to explore the water element in a more intimate way and I'm excited to see where this goes. Um, let me know in the comments section below what decks you've been working with, what elements you're feeling called to explore right now on your path, and what your favorite tools are right now. I'm dying to know and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!